Welcome to the Fit Filiate Podcast, where we talk about behavior and behavior-based conversations as they relate to CrossFit affiliate owners and coaches. My name is Lisa Hetherington, and I'm your co-host. Sitting alongside me are Tony and Chuck, the founders of Fit Filiate. And welcome back to another episode of the Fit Filiate Podcast, continuing our uh, series, if you will, for interviewing or hosting amazing affiliate owners. And today we are pumped to have Danielle from Ironclad CrossFit on the call. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I am very good. Now, you're based in Maryland in the US? Yes, Maryland and Eastern yes. Maryland. Nice, nice. So tell me a little bit about your um, journey into CrossFit. I know that you've only owned the affiliate for or established the affiliate about a year ago, which is, yeah. you know, huge. Um, why don't you backfill us a little bit on your journey into CrossFit, how you came to think, that's it, I'm going to open an affiliate, that's the way it's going to be. Actually, I didn't, that's part of the story, but we'll get there. Um, so my CrossFit journey began back in um, 2014. I'd always done, um, you know, boot camp and all that stuff. I was boot camp instructor, I was moonlighting, I was a police officer for 13 years, and I would just do boot camp classes as an instructor, um, just kind of on this side. Just it was always fun. I've always been interested in fitness. So um, that got me started. So when we moved to a new location, I was too far away from my my boot camp gym, and there was a CrossFit gym. And I was like, all right, well, you know, I've heard of it. This is 2014. So yeah. at that point, I was yeah. like 20, you know, much younger and everything. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me, let me go in and try this. So I loved it right away. And they were, um, it was Blackbird CrossFit. And at that point they were brand new and just starting. And it was so similar to my journey because, you know, a very small, like 12, 1500 square foot gym, you know, rectangle, mm -hmm. like, a little bit of everything, but we're doing it. So um, started there and uh, just absolutely fell in love with it. So um, I had always been a runner, like marathons and half marathons, but I never really like, I don't know. I just kind of, I was athletic. I could run forever, but I wasn't really strong and my body looked yep. like a certain way. So when I started CrossFit, it like actually changed, you know, I became more lean. I became more strong. I just, I just loved it. it just, I was hooked. So, <laughs> um, switched gyms a couple of times through three pregnancies. I, um, began coaching. Um, I did CrossFit for all three of my pregnancies all the way up until the day before I gave birth for all three kids. Super easy pregnancies. Wow. I know that's not like always a thing, but for me, you know, it was, it was great. It helped immensely. Um, postpartum recovery, like I, you know, went through all of that. So I like to help my members with that now. And uh, fast forward to about two years ago, two, three years ago, we were moving, um, my husband and our family, we were moving to the Eastern shore of Maryland from the other side. And I came into mm -hmm. town and there was a CrossFit gym in town. And I was like, okay, great. This is going to be awesome. And, um, just, I just didn't, it wasn't what I had expected. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't awesome. When you think of CrossFit, you know, how you just have that, like that picture in your head of like community and just like good vibes. Mm -hmm. And I, I just personally, not to, not to downplay anybody else, but I just didn't get that. So I was like, yeah. okay, there's definitely a need in this town. And I had left my job as a police officer. Um, and I was doing personal training on the side, you know, I have three kids, so raising mm -hmm. my babies and, just kind of trying to stay busy and little did I know. <laughs> um, so uh, I started looking for a gym, a spot. And for what you wish for. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. So um, to uh, Eastern Shore, Maryland, it's a really, really kind of slow place. It's awesome. It's a beautiful place, but there's not a lot over here. So I was looking for, mm. you know, I was like, oh, let me just see if I could find a place. Like what would happen? Couldn't find anything with more than like 10 foot ceilings. Right. So I was like, ah. So one day I just happened to drive by this place. It's super close to my house. It's like three miles. And I went in and it was like, you know, in an industrial area and had a nice lobby mm -hmm. in the front and then just small. It was only 1200 square feet. And I was like, I, I can make this work. I have to make this work. So I kind of came home and I didn't tell my husband, right? Cause he's going to say no. And uh, <laughs> came home and I was like, so I'm opening a gym. And he's like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> this town needs a good CrossFit gym and I am going to bring it. Mind you, I'd just been a coach at this point. I'd never owned anything. I work in government. So like show up every two yeah. weeks and get a paycheck and health insurance and life was good. Did not, yeah. I do not have a business degree. I had no background at whatsoever. I have a criminal justice degree. So like never did I take a business course. 
yep. but I had a dream, right? So I was like, I can do this. And I had faith in myself and I knew what I had to offer as a coach. And I'd learned from the previous coaches and owners, you know, that I had seen and I still didn't quite understand it. It's a lot like parenting until you are in it. You don't really quite understand it. Yeah. Um, but I, I had a lot of faith in myself. So mm. I was like, you know what? I'm going for it. So yep. my husband, being the amazing husband that he is, was like, okay, oh. here we go. <laughs> and so Buckle we, up. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's an unwilling participant, but he came along for the ride. So yep. um, pretty much we put in a whole bunch of money and I bought all brand new equipment and I bought, you know, I didn't buy like the rubber stall mats. Like I bought like the rollout mats. Like I did it right. Mm. And I made the lobby I'm nice. Stuck, made yeah. The bathrooms were nice. Like I, when I walk in there, like I want people to know, like this is quality. You're paying for quality. Um, yeah. You know, like I didn't buy all rogue stuff, but everything was brand new. Not a single thing in there mm. was used. So when yeah. you walk in my gym, like you're like, oh, wow. Like, okay. This is, this is really nice. Yeah. First but, impression. You know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the lobby is really important. And for me, having a clean bathroom is really important. So like I made sure that the bathrooms were nice. Like I had brushes and hair ties and, you know, everything mm. that a girl or guy might need, you know, spray deodorant, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. So um, I just, I I did it. I, I was like, okay, here we go. So there I was in my little mm. small 1200 square foot. And um, at the beginning, it was really cool because I didn't have that many members, but I was all excited. Me, you know, no business plan whatsoever. Like literally yeah, see the just, chance. Didn't I'm going to run great was. classes. Yeah, but I was running really good classes, right, for a day. And I was like, okay, I yeah. can do this for like the first month. And I did. I actually had a girl who um, had coached CrossFit previously. So she helped me out for the first uh, few months getting started. And people were coming. I was like, mm -hmm. this is great. And then all of a sudden I had like, you know, 20 something people. And I was like, oh, wow, I got no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> like, yeah. This is What's good. Next step? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I should probably figure out, you know, like income to debt ratio. And, you know, just yeah. I, I was just it was literally is what not to do. What not to do is me. Yeah. Um, well, I think I think that a lot of us when we go into owning an affiliate. So I bought the affiliate that I was working at when I opened my affiliate and it was very much like, I know I can run a good affiliate. I know, you know, but then when you get into it, it's like you said with parenthood, like you don't know till you don't know. And you get in, you're <laughs> like, oh, this, you know, everyone talks about, you know, open a gym and save lives, but no one tells you about all the other stuff that oh. comes with it and, you know, deciding on toilet paper and, you know, yeah. having all those sort of little things on hand that, that really make a difference. And the evolution of CrossFit back from when the first gyms opened, like, you know, one of the first gyms I was a member of, I remember like the bathroom was just a little half shed out the back kind of thing well, attached to a rainwater way. tank. Yeah. It was like yeah. you go in and check for snakes on your way yeah. on your way in. Whereas now it's like, you know, I made sure that we had a really nice bathroom like you with all the bits and bobs in there that you need, just because that just makes a difference. Right. And you want it to be aesthetically when people come in and go, Oh wow, like, you know, yeah. it's it looks nice. It presents well. This is what I'm paying, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month for. Yeah. It's not just come in and, and leave with your hands and knees black and, you know, yeah. just stuff everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's been but a real not, evolution. You're not afraid that you're going to get tetanus when you come in my gym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you like, touch something. Yeah. Stuff is not rusty. Everything works. Yeah. Like that was one of the things is like I needed to make my gym the exact opposite. But if you came to town mm. and you were going to do a drop in and you came to, you know, gym A and then me, like yeah. there's a difference. So yes. that's kind of, that's kind of where I based my, um, what I wanted my gym to look like in my head, you know, also mm. pulling from all the gyms that I had been to and worked at. Um, so yeah, it yep. was, it was, I opened December of not last year, but the year before. So I've been open for just yep. over a year. Fantastic. And that's yeah huge. That's, you know, it's an awesome achievement. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, getting through your first year is the steepest learning curve and then you kind of have different cycles through that journey. What do you think in your first year has been, you know, the most valuable lesson, I guess, that you've taken out of the year of, you know, the experience that you've had? 
So I'll tell you, I remember exactly when it was. I was um, visiting my grandma down in Florida at Cape Coral, and I did a drop in there. At one, I don't remember mm-hmm. the name of the team. Just some regular, I always do drop-ins, you know, whenever you go on vacation or whatever. Yep. And there just happened to be another man in the class. And um, he and I were clearly the ones that like were just drop-ins. So uh, <coughs> we we got to talking and it turns out that he had actually owned an affiliate in, I want to say like North Carolina or South Carolina for seven years. And I knew he had to go. He was like on a business trip and he had to go. And I was like, hey man, what's one piece of advice? Like what's one piece, if you just have 30 seconds to tell me the best thing that you learned when owning your gym, he was like, get a team and get it now. Mm. Get people yeah. around, like get help. Like you, it's unsustainable. And at that point I was literally like swirling. I was like circling the drain. I was like, what did I do? You know, I put in savings. I mean, everything, like I went all in on this yep. gym. I was like, this is going to work and I'm going to make it work. I'm not going to fail. But yeah. at that point I was like, cause you know, I had one girl coaching for me very, you know, sporadic at best. And, um, you know, she helped me out for, for, to get started, which was awesome. And mm. I, I very appreciated her. And then I eventually had another woman come on staff with me. So that was awesome. Mm. Uh, but I eventually got two more girls that came into the gym, um, both from, you know, moved to the area from out of town, both 28 years yep. old. It was literally like my story, like 28 yep. year old, 28 year old women walking in. And I'm like, just, I picked them. I was like, you two, they don't know each other. I was like, will you coach me? They're both like, no, <laughs> what do you mean? No, like this is going to be great. So anyway, um, help them get their L1. They both coach for me now. They're both fantastic coaches. So now I have awesome. um, myself and, and those three other coaches. I have another girl in the process getting her online uh, certification right now. Um, so okay. we have an all women staff. So that's cool. Um, that's I neat. hired a girl to help me with, um, you know, lead intake and all that kind of stuff, trying to take that off my mm. plate. I have a guy um, who helps me with cleaning. Uh, you know, we yep, swap for cleaning stuff. So that's yep. helped immensely. And um, currently working on a guy who is um, going to take over my programming, which for me is huge. Yep. Get rid of that. Like, that was like, yeah. I was like, ah, okay, you know, like let's make it work. So just kind of divvying up and, you know, getting other people mm. involved and not me doing everything has been a total game Huge. changer. Yeah. And that is, you know, usually as affiliate owners, we kind of battle through the first couple of years. You know, well, I can't really afford anyone or you have, you know, someone right. who's coaching yeah. who you trade for membership or, yeah. you know, one of the first jobs I did get rid of as an affiliate owner was the cleaning. I remember hearing that at a seminar once going, you know, work out what your hourly rate would be for PT and then figure it, you don't need to be, and I, you know, never did a great job and I hated it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm going to farm this out as soon as I can. And it was yeah. the best decision I've ever made. But we tend to be a bit slow to get a team around us. And then we're a bit slow to start to hand stuff out to the team and let some stuff go and yeah. and be okay with that. So you're, you know, well along that journey, which is, which is fantastic. Um, I've heard you describe yourself as an entrepreneur with big dreams on a beer drinker budget, which I just loved. <laughs> so it's true. Do, Tell me a little bit about like what are some of your big dreams for that for you know the affiliate and and what you ultimately you know why you open it and what you want it to be. Yeah, so uh, well to start the reason why, like I said, this community needed a good yeah. CrossFit. Um, so I was like, all right, that's me. I'm this is apparently I'm here for this reason. This is what we're gonna do. Um, when I started it, like I said, it was just me and the other woman coaching. So and I was she was only coaching two classes a week, so everything else was me four classes mm-hmm. a day and um, one on Saturday. So um, that, that was a bit much, but um, I couldn't do anything else. But one mm-hmm. of the things about me is I have three children. I have a seven-year-old, I have a four-year-old and I have a two-year-old and I grew up playing soccer. I love mm-hmm. soccer. Not to say I'm good at it, but I love it. And I'm a, just a coach by nature. Like I've always just been a coach. Yep. Um, just, I've always just been a kind of a, just somebody who can take the lead and run with it. Right. I was a cop for mm-hmm. 13 years. That kind of goes hand in hand. Policing is a lot like gym ownership and I'll get there. So um, one of the things I really love to do is when I got the second coach on, um, I she took on Thursday night so I could go coach soccer. My kids, two teams, my two boys. So I I love coaching. So one of the first things that I tried to branch out with my like dream of um, owning CrossFit um, is doing CrossFit Kids program. So mm-hmm. now I looked at my, you know, my, my schedule and I was like, okay, what night of the week is not very popular? Okay. Tuesday nights, not super popular. 
uh, I'm going to open up, I'm going to run a CrossFit Kids program. So um, we just started our second session of it. There are six week sessions, uh, you know, 30 minutes, every, every 45 minutes, another 30 minute class. Yep. And wow, I am like literally selling out. It has been amazing. Um, one of my other coaches, she's a teacher. She's a fourth grade teacher. She helps me with it. Perfect. And that has been a game changer. I've gotten parents who are like, oh, wait, mm. this actually looks like fun. And, you know, join from it as well. Um, I'd yeah. say that was probably my pivotal moment for me personally with, with my growth was adding yeah. that kids class in was huge because mm. I learned that people don't necessarily – it's you want your kids to have the best, right? So you'll pay anything for your children to have these experiences, but you may not want to do it yourself. You're like, eh, yes. look a little too hard, but my kids will do it, right? Yes. So people will pay for their children. Um, so opening up that kids program, I mean, people are asking like, hey, can we do shirts? You know, like all of this stuff that is just opening a lot more avenues. Um, and it's wonderful. Mm. So that's been that's been great. Um, one of my yeah. dreams, what I really want to do is I, I want to have a 60s plus class. Yeah, uh, really, nice. really important to me. I, I mean, I want the spectrum, right? I want children. Yeah. I want adults. I want the aging. I mean, I to me, that's really important. Um, not to say that they can't take a regular class, but also it's really important for peers and, you know, mm. working more on balance and coordination, not necessarily mm. getting a 500 pound deadlift. So one of my coaches, um, she's a medical doctor. She's actually the head primary care physician at the, at the, um, wow is that she works at. Yeah. She's 60 years old. She's got guns. She's got a six pack. She is, um, toast to bar, chest to bar pull-ups. Mm -hmm. You name it. She is six years old and she is up there and she is Boom. doing, uh, That's you awesome. know, box jump overs to a 20 inch box. It, and it's just, it is literally inspiring to watch her. And so, mm -hmm. um, we're, it's in the works right now, but we are trying to get, you know, the details nailed down for when she, because I want her to run it as a six year old woman, I want people 60 and over to look at her and yep. be like, Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, they're gonna my life's not people. over. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna see my 28 year old coaches and be like, Oh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. you know, no offense, thanks, little girl, but <laughs> she's one of them, right? So she mm. started CrossFit eight years ago. Eight years ago, she couldn't do this stuff. So when she was yeah. in her 50s, you know, mid 50s, late 50s, and now she's 60 and she's, I mean, she's literally peaking. It's amazing. Mm. Um, so I just really have an affinity for young people and old people. And so that's my next, like, all right, we're going to do this. Um, mm. yeah, and it's fantastic when you can, you know, broaden the, the spectrum of, of who, who you can serve, but serve them really well, rather than just going, okay, well, we're a catch all for everyone. And, you know, the old saying CrossFit's for everyone, not necessarily everyone is for CrossFit, but yeah. you know, if you can really target the things that you do well, that's going to you know, fill you with passion every time you're running those programs and those classes and, you know, help get past some of those speed bumps and, and learning curves that come with some of those things as well. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's an awesome. Um, and it's so great. You've got someone in that demographic that's crushing yes. life. Yes. She literally, you, you know, is the example that you can, you know, put into that, that role that people can go, Oh, that's, that's aspirational. That's where I want to be. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Part of the, you know, like you, you, you've said at the start that when you open the affiliate, your husband was kind of like, you know, supportive, but like just kind of coming along for the ride. So, yeah. and that was similar to the situation I was in when I, when I opened mine and it's kind of like being an affiliate owner can be incredibly lonely because I would go home and vent and rant about it, but he's like, well, you just do whatever you want to do. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, having worked in government positions as well, like you're used to having committees to make decisions. And, you know, I remember when the whole pandemic hit, I was like, I wish I was in a room of other people with somebody else with the whiteboard marker to come up with a strategy for this, where it's like, nope, you're in the room by yourself and you've got the whiteboard marker. So it can be a lot of pressure to realize that it succeed or fail. It's, it's on you. Yes. Um, what led you down the path of seeking out some coaching or, you know, um, mentorship in regard to the box, the, the affiliate and what you needed to do? Cause yeah. you know, you're now working with us here at Fit Affiliate, which is awesome. And, you know, you just started your journey a few months ago. So what led you, to make that investment in yourself and, and make that leap that 
hey, I don't have all the answers? Oh, well, like I said, I, I went into it completely like I don't know what I'm doing. So I knew uh, I, I knew I was going to need help. Like I'm not, mm. you know, I'm not too proud to say when I need help and when I'm not, you know, yep. not doing the best. And the thing about me is I'm very type A. When I do something, I need it to be right. And if I don't know what I'm doing, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to ask for help. Like I can walk into That's a middle awesome. room and be like, hey, where is, you know, I, I don't know where I'm going. Can somebody please help me? So uh, mm. I kind of felt that way um, in the beginning. So that story actually backs up to, gosh, it was probably 2019. I went to um, the gymnastics course that CrossFit puts on and there was mm -hmm. this amazing instructor there, Chuck. And yep. um, I just, man, what an awesome dude. Like, and I know everybody yeah. that meets him loves him. Um, you know, I started following on Instagram and everything. And I, at that point, I never, never in a million years, I was just a coach. Like I was just taking the CrossFit yeah. gymnastics course to get better at pull-ups, right? Like mm. it was never like a forethought of owning a gym. I never wanted to own a gym. So, uh, you know, I met him and then you just followed him on Instagram and everything and, and saw that he'd part of this fit affiliate. And I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, just whatever. Mm. So yep. when I opened, I was like, okay. All happy go lucky, right? Because everything's fine. Everything's fine until you're like, oh my God, I don't actually know what no, I'm it's not doing. Fine. Correct, correct. <laughs> or it's fine, but it could go, it's either going to go great or it's going to go really wrong. And I'm not about to yeah. go really wrong because I'm not going to fail. Like I'm not, I'm not allowing yeah. myself to, to fail. So um, coincidentally, in June of last year, I think it was June, I went to uh, Nashville to a conference that was for fit pros or whatever. Um, mm. And these people, nice enough people, really great lunch, I'll tell you. But they were trying to sell me business coaching for like $13,000. And they're like, you just need your systems and you just need to change your business plan. And at that point, um, no, it was May. It was May. And I wasn't an affiliate yet. I was just Ironclad mm -hmm. Fitness. I knew I was an yep. affiliate, but I had started the process. And they're like, you just need to change your business plan. And I was like, no. Like I went into CrossFit because I'm, that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like mm. I, I want to be a CrossFit gym. I don't want to yeah. do, you know, small group. I mean, it is small group, but they wanted like, you know, two, three people make more yeah. money. blah blah blah. And they were mm. like, no, you need to change your business plan. I'm like, listen, I'm not changing my business plan. I'm CrossFit for a reason. So that didn't work. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I never ended up going with them and, um, works for somebody else, not for me. So that's when I yeah. started seeing, you know, it's kind of like those things that, that theory, when you think of things, like you see it more often. So all of a sudden Chuck's yeah. name's popping up again on my Instagram, like more and more. And I was like, Oh, so I started clicking on affiliate. And then of course it pops up because the internet gods told me so. Mm. And, so yeah. all of a it is. and I was like, you know what? Like I really, he's just a very likable, very trustworthy guy. Like he clearly knows what he's doing. I mean, I spoke to him at length, you know, and mm. I was like, let me just call the affiliate. So yeah. I signed up for my call and it was Chuck and Tony on my original first call. And yep. I think they asked me like, what's your name? And then why, like, what do you need help with? And I literally just started bawling. I just yep. started crying. I, I was I like, think that's the standard. I did that as well. Oh, really? <laughs> At least I'm not alone. And yep. it was basically my biggest thing was like, I have three little kids and I'm missing so much because I'm constantly working. I need help. I'm, I, I need help. Just help me, mm. please. And so, yeah. you know, they did the diagnostic and they accepted me as a client and um, they assigned me to Lonnie as a coach. Yep. And she was amazing. Me. Yes, she absolutely, hands down, so helpful, so helpful, <laughs> who has um, helped me immensely. And one of the really good things about Fit Affiliate is um, she's never given me the answer. Like yeah. she probably wants to pull her hair out with me and, and I'm like, ah, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but she helps me work through things and you know, she's a coach. She is coaching mm. me to get there on my own, you know, makes me think through things and makes me do things that I'm sure she could just tell me and it would be done and I would have it, but she doesn't do that. You know, she really pushes me and you know, it, Fit Philly is an investment. Is it cheap? Mm. No. But if it was cheap, mm. then it's not necessarily worth it, right? Um, yeah. For me, you know, when I get the bill and my husband's like, oh my gosh, you know, like, what is this? Well, this pushes me. This pushes me to yeah. be a better business owner, which has made me now able to be home more often because I'm now able to have the teams in place and do all the mm. things that I need that I didn't have when I was miserable and crying. So, yeah. No, it's 100%. Exactly. Yeah. It's 
not worth it. And I think that that was the the thing, you know, when I first started with Fitfiliate, I remember reading the post and like, is he in the room with me? Like he's, I yes. feel like he's talking about me. And then I had that initial call and, you know, what I love most is that they didn't say, okay, well, here's the systems that we're going to give you to implement. It's like, well, what do you want your affiliate to be? And yeah. I was like, uh, uh, um, I had to really think hard on that because it's like I just, just want to keep the doors open. Right. And no, I'm just not bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, it's all the way through. It was kind of like it was not, and I'd work with business uh, coaches in the past where it was very do this, do this, do this, and then I get frustrated because things weren't working, whereas, you know, they would just say, well, okay, well, if that's your dream, then that's what we'll want it to be if that's important to you. And it's like was very – and it was more so caring about me, the person, rather than the gym was really secondary. It's like, are you taking care of you? Like, what do you need for you? Like, are you sleeping yeah. enough? Are you, you know, tell us about your struggles and frustrations and kind of thing. And, you know, I came I came in because I'm like, oh, I just feel like I can't work with staff. I feel like I have issues with it. And then they're like, okay, cool. And I don't even think we talked about that for the first <laughs> few meetings. We got into all these other things. And it was so cool yeah. just being having someone that you could unload your stuff to for the week and know you weren't going to get judged and it's going, okay, yeah. so what's the real problem here or is it a problem and you're just, or, or are you just making it one because you want, you know, something to do today? It's like, right. oh, and yeah. So that's the power of it. And I think, you know, Lonnie is amazing. Who's one of our coaches um, at asking those, those, you know, powerful, oh, powerful yeah. questions. You mentioned earlier that affiliate ownership is a bit like being in the in the police force. So um just to circle back, what what was that um how does that link up? So in, in police work, right, you pretty much only get called when people are having a hard time, right? Like yep. nobody calls the police because they're like happy, you know, very rarely. I mean, maybe somebody might yep. bring a cookie once in a while, but like usually people call the police when there's a problem. So in like, you know, gym ownership, people are usually calling you because because they either want to get fit or they want to, you know, they need a starting point or something. And then when people generally call the police a lot, nine times out of 10, they're then angry at you because you're there like a domestic or something like, you know, I don't need you. I don't want you here or whatever. And not that the gym ownership is that way, but then, you know, you get them in there and then they start working out and they're like, ah, this is awful. This is so hard, you know? And it's just funny because, you know, well, the taxpayers are paying your salary and the and the gym members are paying your salary, my salary now. It's just yeah. it's very similar because like they call you when they need you and then they complain when they're there. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what, but it's just I'm, funny I'm, because go ahead. I'm doing this for you because you know, I'm I doing this because I care about you. That's why we've got to do right. the burpees and the thrusters yeah. and the you know, yeah. if I didn't care, I felt I, I often like sometimes it was like being a parent of yeah. I'm, you know, people come in and go, oh, I really need this. And it's like, no, what you really need is this, but I'm going to hide what you need under the, hide all those vegetables under the cheese sauce and give yeah. you what you think you want, but I'm really actually going to give you what you need in yeah. underneath that and just disguise yeah. it a bit for you. Yeah, yeah. people are very uh, funny about when they start something and then they spend the whole hour complaining about it. And there's that theory about why, you know, some gyms struggle with, for example, a bring a friend week because, you know, like, hey, come and get sweaty and uncomfortable with me for an hour and, you know, let's do burpees and thrusters and every, their friends are all going, uh, that does not sound like what I'd want to do for an hour. That doesn't sound yeah. fun. That's You're like going to hurt husband. me for an hour? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm not going to walk tomorrow and I pay for this. My husband yeah. um, owns a lawn care company, right? So people call him and he does a service for them. He cuts their lawns, mm. he does their mulch, you know, he does something for them. And he's like, mm. why would you go into a business where people are giving you money, but now they have to work, you know, essentially for themselves, but for you being yep. like, they, they now have to do the work. Like, hey, yep. this is what they need though. Like you said, you know what you yep. need. He's like, you're just, he's like, are you a glutton for punishment? I was like, well, yeah. pretty much. A little bit. A little bit. But it's when you feel that like early in the in the um discussion when we first talked about how you started, you were like, I'm com it was almost you saying that you were compelled to open the affiliate. Like you're like, yeah. I have to open this. This that's why I'm here right now. 
you know, the universe has put me in this space. You right. know, this was not this my local life. area. Yeah, it's you know, I was just gonna be my mum to my three kids and and do my yeah. thing. Um, how has how have you found the balance? And I know you said that you did struggle with that initially with being, you know, mum, business owner, entrepreneur, coach, you know, the many hats that you do wear in the affiliate. How have you found balancing those and still like, you know, helping your kids get to where they want to be? So I am very, very lucky that my husband is incredibly supportive without him and his support. There's no way like it would yeah. be, it would be almost impossible. Um, mm. So while he isn't necessarily, you know, he didn't love the idea um, yeah. without him. I don't know if I could. Um, mm. He, he definitely holds down the fort. And right now in Maryland, it's, it's the winter. So like the grass isn't growing super fast. He's not mowing every day. So yeah. thankfully for us in the downtime, it's, you know, a little bit better. And in the summer, you know, the kids, it's like, all right, kids, we're going to the gym. Come on, yeah. you know? get your, get your toy, get your Lego that you want to bring. And, you know, I have a lobby and we put the baby gate across so that nobody can, you know, nobody gets the safety purposes yep. and you know, they understand. And it's just, it's kind of a family thing. You know, we, this is yep. what we do. If we want to have food on the table and clothes on our back, we let's go. Come on. We're going to the gym. Um, Lonnie has helped me out a lot with, um, she's made me do a time study. Cause I was like, Oh my yep. gosh, like, I can't do this. And so she's <laughs> like, all right, do a time study and then see what you can allocate out. And um, mm -hmm. I just did that recently and it's been, you know, pretty eye opening. Like, oh, okay, I don't necessarily need to be the one that can do this. You know, she can do that or, or you know, this mm -hmm. other girl can do that. So um, that's been very helpful. I think I'm still, I think I'm still a little lopsided as far as, um, you know, being at work more than I want to be. Um, mm. But it's, it's one of those things like, you know, like you said, you don't know what you don't know. When I opened, I had no idea uh, how bad, not bad, just how difficult it was going to be. And yep. Yep. Um, hiring the coaches has helped immensely. And I'm still looking for another one, if not two coaches to you know, take even more from the morning mm -hmm. off of my plate, because now I'm really into like the numbers and, and the side of the business. Like when I first opened, I didn't even keep track. And Lonnie, <laughs> it was like September. And she's like, how much money did you make last month? Like, what was your, you know, gross, whatever. And I was like, I'm sorry, my what? And yeah, she's like, what? how much money? Like, what did you? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, what do you mean? You the rent. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's your overhead? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, how? Danielle. <laughs> so that was pretty early on. And so once we got a handle on that, then I understood like, yeah. oh no, these are things I should know. You know, what is a critical number? And you know, mm. an ROI and like all this stuff, like for the first several months, you know, five, six months, I was just like, I don't know, the bills are paid and I'm still not making money, but it's okay. Here we are. Exactly. You know, And a, a lot of affiliate owners go years where they're probably too afraid to look in the bank account, you know, at any yeah. point in time, just going, hopefully things don't bounce and reject and juggling yeah. one thing to the other. And um, you know, to be so early in your journey and have a handle on that is a really good foundation of understanding that it doesn't have to be scary. The numbers don't have to intimidate you. Um, and that there's actually power in, ironically, power in numbers, which is one of our programs we run, but there's actually power in understanding your numbers that you can actually control those. Like you, you're, you're in a position of being an entrepreneur now. It's like, I need more money. Well, I'm just going to create it. Yeah. And it sounds simple when you say that, but it's true. You can just introduce something that's going to create revenue for you. Right. So that's another thing that Lonnie worked with me on was um, I became a distributor for Thorn, right? Like yep. every affiliate is able to do that. I didn't realize yep. that because I just didn't, you know, I did. I'm mm -hmm. busy coaching every single class. Yep. So she got me, you know, as a distributor for Thorn. So now, you know, I sell their, I've used them myself. I sell their supplements yep. and, you know, that helps. Um, I work with uh, Forever Fierce for apparel. Mm -hmm. And so yep. we only, this is um, one of our shirts that we did with them. Nice. And, um, you know, by doing that, now we're on their apparel, apparel program. So now every you know, mm. three or four months, like they send out the design and it's just, it's just another level, like another way, another source without having yep. to get more members per se. Cause I'm yes. a very small gym. That's one thing I forgot yep. to tell you with in, um, 
July. So I, I opened in December, right? In mm. July, I was already like, ah, classes are getting a little tight. It's getting a little unsafe here with all these barbells overhead because I was mm. in my 1200 square foot space. So July, I was doing, you know, a 200 meter run in the back parking lot and I saw this space in the business park and I was like, oh, they're moving. So I went in, what do I do? Not going to knock. Hi, you're leaving. <laughs> when you have, yeah. you know, and so yeah. they were leaving in August. So I actually moved my gym from 201 down to 103 and 104. So I doubled my space. Finally had two Damn. bathrooms. Nice. And like financially, was I ready for it? No, because at that point I wasn't even hmm. keeping track of how much money I made. Right. Like, no, yeah, I'm not ready for it. But we went, you know, we did it. And I told my husband, he was like, oh my God, are you sure? And I was like, I don't have any other option. The business is outgrowing my space. I yeah. need to make this move. So I went another head first and it's been so amazing. And yeah. just, you know, all the space, it just, it's helped so much. So that's another thing. Like when you talk about, is there ever a right time? No, the no. right time is right now because there's never going to be a right time. So yeah. that's what I learned. And I remember one of the things that Chuck often says on, on my calls is, you know, move faster than fear. Like, just, oh, yeah. just do it. Great. If you if you sit and wait for fear to catch up and wait for the perfect time, you'll never find the perfect time. When I opened, I opened in a very small space as well, and I always waited for the adjoining shed. There was a roller door that separated us to um, become vacant, and it finally did, and it sat there for nine months, and I was like, Ugh. and one day I had the brainstorm to go to the owner and say, can I have this space, but I'm just going to pay all your outgoings and no rent for, you know, six months. Can we do that? So then it's no cost to you. It's vacant at the moment. She's like, yeah, okay, we can do that. And I was like, and instead of affiliate saying to me, well, I don't know that you've got the numbers to support that. Is this the right time? Like it was at the in 2020, so coming out of COVID and still lots of uncertainty, you know, a lot of other places would have said, well, well is this the right time? Whereas they're like, okay, well, let's cost it out. How many members do we need to make this viable? And yeah. it, within six months that you can pay that rent. And it's like, okay, oh, you didn't say no. Cool. Right. And again, just went into it and go, okay, well, now I've got the space and the capacity, like what can we right. then do with this? Okay. And what other yeah. opportunities does that create? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's, so, uh, that's huge. Then, then yeah. helping you, then helping me, per, like Lonnie personally helping me, understand the numbers was so big. Mm. You're talking to somebody when I opened that I had no, no operating procedures. I didn't have a manual. I didn't have anything, right? Like I literally had yep. nothing. So when I started with Fitfiliate, I mean like bare bottom, like I was as low as you can go, not necessarily mm. emotionally, but like I had, I was a clean slate. So it was really mm. cool is that, you know, Lonnie has helped me literally build from the ground up, get my procedures. Like I'm sure one thing that I, I really appreciated and that I think that they, Chuck and Tony and Lonnie and everybody appreciated about me was I wasn't like, I need to get more money. I need to get more money. Like I need yeah. to get my shit straight first before yeah. I can even think about adding more people. So, you know, it yeah. took me a lot of weeks because again, she didn't, she didn't say, I mean, she owns a very successful CrossFit gym. She wasn't like, oh, here's my operating procedures. She was like, yeah. hey, start writing them. And I was like, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and I just, she helped me figure out where to pull from and what to do. Mm. And, but she didn't give me anything, which also yeah. made help me take onus of it. Like, yeah, like I wrote that 42 page yeah. document. Like, wow, it was great. Well, it's, and I guess that that's where our no advice, you know, kind of comes from because we've learned and, and we know this from our members in the gym, you tell them to do something like go eat broccoli, drink water, eat your chicken no one's doing it because it wasn't their idea. But as soon as, you know, they come back to you and go, oh, look, I, I had this really good idea. If I drink more water and eat more chicken and broccoli, I'm going to be better. And then they start doing it. You're like, yeah, I've been telling you that for months. Cool. Um, <laughs> you know, and then, yeah, good, good job to you. Well done. But, you know, once it becomes their idea and they own it, then they're more likely to run with it, which is, right. you know, our experience. And definitely the times when, you know, I've felt like I've come up with my idea and my answer, because we do know the answers, we just need some help finding them. Then I've, Literally. you know, I've been all in on the execution rather than here, go and stand at the front of your gym with the sandwich board. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. If that's the best yeah. idea you've got, we don't need to work together anymore. So yeah. it, it's a, it's a really interesting perspective when it is, 
you know, and you take ownership of that, go, well, cool. I need, because, you know, Lonnie's operating system clearly wouldn't work for yours for size right. and different space and different yes. things. It's, you do need to start with right. that blank piece of paper and go, well, how do I do things and how do I right. want to do things? Yeah. And that was her encouragement was like, you need to make it for yourself. I'm yep. not going to. Yeah, I'm not gonna and I didn't ask her and she didn't offer, but you know, she was like, All right, go write it. And I was like, uh, and then I did it, you know. So it was it was and it's a really powerful perspective that you've come in with, which is that little bit different, is not just I need more leads, I need more people, like just I that will solve all my problems. Whereas you're like, I don't have a foundation to support more people because you know, one of the biggest trip ups, and I and I did that where you can fill your bucket one end, but it's pouring out the other end because you just don't have the systems and people and structures in place to to support that. So you'll keep coming back to that natural tipping point that you have. Yeah. You'll get some in and you'll get more out. And how do I find that balance of it's not necessarily about having more people come in, it's like providing more value to the people that are there and yeah absolutely you know, especially when you have a 2000 square foot warehouse like yeah. you need to have i can't have 30 people i can i mean my cap is at 14 and at 12 yeah. we're like ah better be careful you know watch your kettlebell yeah. you know so you yeah. know i have to make the best of the amazing members that i already have i don't necessarily want tons and tons of people i want quality people and i want people that mm. want to be there so that's yeah. uh that was very resonating with me because I, I can't just fill, I just can't get just more and more people that doesn't work for my gym, for my space, for this area. It just doesn't work. And it doesn't work for what you want out of it. Like, you right. know, also, yeah, I never I wanted want to, to walk into the gym and go, who's that person? Like, I've, I don't know who they are. Like, oh, who, right. You know, yeah. just, yeah, that yeah. just is, that's never where we wanted to be. Um, so kind of, you know, this has been an amazing chat and I think your journey through the first, you know, um, period of, as an affiliate owner has been uh, different in many ways to a lot of it. Like you did start in the chaos and the whole, you know, hopeful, um, optimism. This is just going to be fine. I can run a great affiliate to the reality <laughs> of, well, there's a lot of things I don't know <laughs> to now, <laughs> now getting the the coaching, but if someone were to sit down in front of you today and say, hey, I want to open affiliate, what would be, you know, your the same as you did for that um, affiliate owner drop-in at the gym you're at is like, if you've got 30 seconds, just give me your best piece of advice. Well, I, I probably have to piggyback off of what he said about getting a team in place. But also, if so, if you're like, if you were asking like somebody like, hey, should I? I would say this is a full on commitment. Like you, I don't think that you can start an affiliate and just kind of half ass it or else yeah. it's not going to work. Right. I mean, isn't it like 20% of gyms fail in the first year or whatever it is, um, or 80%, yeah. whatever it is, but um, you have to be committed. And I think that you really need to, you need to, you need to do it right. You need to be able to go yeah. in full in on everything. Like you can't going in on a dream and a prayer was wonderful. And it lasted for all of about three months before I was like, Oh my God. And thankfully the way I am, I'm not going to let myself fail. So I asked for help, but definitely um, asking for help early and asking for help often is yeah. I mean, literally, even if you've run a business before, I think an affiliate is probably, I mean, I've never run another type of business. And I hope I never do. Um, <laughs> But just the the relationships and the emotional attachment to the members and stuff, it's different than like a Globo gym. It's mm -hmm. not going to be opening it up. And like you said, who's that? Like, yeah. you know, this is where I've become friends with these people. These my members are my friends, you know, and there is that mm -hmm. uh, there's that emotional side to it. So if you're going to do it, you need to be you need to be all in. You need to be all yeah, in. Yeah. And you can't you can't keep that. Uh, you can to a degree, but it's very hard to keep that emotional distance and go, okay, I'm not going to be friends with anybody. You know, this is just a business. It's, you know, when people are being vulnerable with you and they're oh, exposing right. themselves in, you know, the pit of a workout and you've got somebody in tears or somebody comes in and you know that they're out of sorts and you start to have those deeper conversations with people and go, hey, I actually give a shit about you and I don't want you to um, die yes. early and I want you to be well. And it's, you, you can't not form those relationships um, and be successful in that space. That's that's the foundation of, of CrossFit is having those right. relationships and 
can make it tricky to navigate when you're trying to make some business decisions as well because people tend to have a little bit of an ownership of it. But, you know, it's finding that. When you raise prices. Like when you have to raise your prices. I did a a price increase and I was so scared, you know, because I'm like, ah, like Mm. I should, you know. But I needed to. I need to again. I think that I, I believe and I have the confidence in myself that I offer a value more than I am charging. So you're right. Yep. It is very difficult when you've now become friends with those people. But if you go into it with like, yeah, I'm raising prices and this is why X, Y, Z, you know, it's mm-hmm. nothing personal. You know, yep. you can have that conversation it's- as well. And hopefully they respect and you and your service. Yeah, because if you are genuinely providing the value that you think you're providing, then it, it won't be, it'll just, it, it'll go through, right. you know, and people will go, potentially you'll have people come up and say to you, it's about time or, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, you needed <laughs> to do that because I want you around for a long time and, like, if you're not yeah. doing something that's sustainable, you're not going to be here. So that's yeah. fantastic. Well, I have truly enjoyed this chat with you and getting to Thank meet you, you today and too. I can't wait to see your continuing journey through and see Ironclad go from strength to strength. I know that, you know, when I catch up with Lonnie, she's been raving about, you know, your attitude and your success and the way that you're just executing on things and and how far you've come in a relatively short time. So that's yeah. something to be incredibly proud of. Thank um, you. And your, I love your enthusiasm for CrossFit and your passion for what you're doing and where you want to take it. And I think your community is definitely blessed to have you. Um, okay. And such a good energy and vibe. So. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule of of being a mum and being a, uh, an entrepreneur and, and business owner and affiliate owner and coach um, to have this chat. And I know that uh, we'll definitely have you back on for a longer chat and where we can, you know, dig into some more things along your journey because I think it's really valuable for – there are a lot of new affiliates out there understanding that it's okay to be overwhelmed but it's also okay to admit that you don't have all the answers, which is where I think the struggle can be at times. Ask awesome. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, yeah, you so that's much. the big one, isn't it? Yeah, All right, you really enjoy the rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you, isn't it? All right. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, for listening to the Fit Affiliate Podcast. If you would be interested in hopping on a free call with us to just kind of chat about what you think your problems are and what you think the gap is between where you're at and where you want to go, we can see if maybe we can help you along that journey, figure out if we're all a good fit to do some sweet things together. So click the link, set up a consult. Let's help you identify some problems that we can mutually solve.